<laughs> and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech and we are of course broadcasting live straight out of Stockholm, sweden and we do this show each and every day at 8 a.m central european summertime i come to you like an atomic clock guys it's amazing to be back i'm back from the us i'm back to the studio and we're ready to roll and deliver even more content really this week at consensus has been mind-blowing i have so much to share with you and today we'll be talking about number one Bitcoin potentially reaching 11,000 very, very soon. Many technical analysis people and many technical indicators are pointing in that direction, especially now that we have survived the Binance hack, we have survived the Bitfinex FUD, we have survived even the recent whale drop. And so today we'll be talking about what is actually happening. We'll be discussing how whales, by the way, dump on you in order to liquidate you on BitMEX and other platforms. And then when you take the other side of the trade and you become bullish then they wreck you again by increasing the prices guys be very careful with margin trading we'll be talking a lot about that today and also we'll be talking about the stock market because the stock market is really in this cycle that you need to understand and we're reaching the end of that cycle so we will be talking about that cycle today and really, we need to realize that at the end of the day, if you're not prepared for a stock market crash, if you're not prepared, what can happen in the economy, you are the plankton. You're the plankton that everyone else is eating. So it's important for you to get educated and hopefully I can give you some insights about that. Also, we'll be talking about, so, um, guys, I have so much news to share. I have so much new news to share. We, we'll be talking about market makers and the role they play in this market and so many other things. Before we start, be sure to number one, smash that like, number two, smash that bell button right now and of course welcome everyone i see jean i see bernard i see equa j man welcome everyone who is here let me know which country you are from let me know where you're watching from right now also i have a new chair let me know what you think about the chair the last chair wasn't that good for my for my back so i have a good good chair now Okay, let's get into the markets. What is happening in the Bitcoin and crypto land? Looking at the charts, we see the following. Uh, Bitcoin at plus 1%. We see Ethereum at 0.15%. We see Ripple at 2.29%. Uh, so slight movement upwards. What is important right now is that many are people are talking about the so-called decoupling. That... Um, Bitcoin is now pulling ahead and to check on how decoupling is doing just go here and switch to Bitcoin and you can see the current state of how other altcoins are performing against Bitcoin and I think this market will really show how far we've come in terms of education and in terms of market maturity because while there are very interesting altcoins while there are mind-blowingly good altcoins that have a future there are also many altcoins that simply don't make sense I mean most of the coins on coin market cap right here if you just scroll it, I mean it's uh, they will disappear in my view it, most of the coins will not survive so it is just how every bubble works when you have a new technology that is changing the world you have a bubble because people are excited and they're excited way too early they're too greedy way too early you create a bubble there are many companies many projects getting started they get so much money uh, and only a few companies and only a few projects survive now you look at the dot-com bubble how many big tech operations we have right now just a few uh, you look at the train bubble in the uh, uh, great britain a few hundred years ago how many train companies you have right now in britain not a lot and so i think the same will be with crypto i think some altcoins will absolutely do well but the market will get more and more mature and i think bitcoin and top uh, top altcoins will be pulling away from others but we will see let me know if you agree let me know if you disagree also now of course people are speculating are we in a 100 percent bull market or are we still just bouncing around in the bear market and we are to see lower lows or if we will retest lower lows i think some people have a good point when they compare this um, situation with the uh, a bear market of 2013, 14, 15. Basically, some people say, hey, maybe we are in this position right now where we had this crash. And this is, by the way, from 2014, as you can see, we had this crash. And now we see a very good bull run, uh, as we saw in June of 2014. And then it just continued down. Hey, maybe it is like this. But one thing is for certain. We see new kinds, <laughs> we, we see new kinds of scams uh, coming up. And to me, this is really the... Uh, 
indicator for the bull market. New bull market equals new scams. Apparently, BitConnect is relaunching. So apparently, we will see BitConnect 2.0 in 41 days. Hey, I don't know if this is a joke. I don't know if they're just messing around. But one thing is for sure, they want your email address. I would definitely stay away 100%. But this just, just shows you that with new bull market, there will be new scams. Whenever you see a good positive move in the market, there will be a hundred new people trying to steal your money. And by the way, the lengths, guys, I, I, just, I cannot reiterate this now. The length people will go to in order to scam you in this industry is mind-blowing. The lengths they will go to and try and take your money. Hard-earned money is just mind-blowing. So just beware of that and don't be too excited when you hear things that are too good to be true. Because once again, if, if BitConnect is back, uh, I, I'm sure they will get a lot of new people because most people haven't experienced the last bull run and bull market. They haven't experienced what happened to BitConnect. So be very careful. Whatever is too good to be true, it probably is. Now, Let's get to the first topic of the day. The fact that Bank of America's chief investment officer, I mean, this is not your average guy. This is your not your average guy on YouTube and not your average guy on the street that you're asking. This is the chief investment officer at Bank of America. Uh, he was in an interview where he talked about the fact that, hey, Bitcoin is actually a signal of a looming recession. Something we have to understand is that recession is 100% guaranteed. And this is where one of my biggest inspirations and one of one of my biggest um, uh, role models and uh, mentors when it comes to the market economy and microeconomy, uh, Ray Dalio comes in. This is, by the way, why he's on the thumbnail. I learned so much from this guy. And right now, if you haven't watched his video about how the economic machine works, I mean, it is one of the best videos on the internet about the economy and how the economy works. And he des describes in a very easy to understand way the whole situation and how the central banks work and how credit works and how that is connected to everything that we see around us on each and every day. So if you haven't watched it, I don't know what you're doing, guys. If you haven't watched this video, you need to do it right now. Maybe open up a new tab and watch it later. But if you do not know how the economic machine works, guys, you are plankton. You are plankton that will be eaten by the big whales, you are plankton that will be eaten by the central banks, you are plankton that simply is ignorant about what is happening and your wealth will be taken away from you. Because if you do not know how the economic machine works, you have no clue how the central banks work. You have no clue that money is basically created out of thin air when you go to a private bank and you lend and, and you take out some money. You have no clue that without assets that generate cash flow, you will be losing money because you are just in the in the country that has a central bank and they will devalue the currency in order to sustain the economy. So definitely go watch it if you haven't. And now coming back to this article about the chief investment officer of Bank of America talking about the fact that, hey, right now we are in an environment where most investors do not get anything for their money. We are right now in an environment with very low interest rates, which makes the players in the economy take more risks because you cannot just leave money in your bank account it will have zero interest. A lot of things that people thought were assets are really not assets anymore. And therefore, even traditional investors are now looking into crypto assets. Even traditional people who do not want to touch anything that they do not understand, now they're forced on new frontiers. Because bonds and just having cash and having these low-risk investments, it is simply 0% appreciation on your money today. It is not viable for them. So he speculates about the fact that, hey, maybe... Maybe it is time for all of these uh, individuals and may, for all of these investment uh, companies and institutions, maybe it's time for them to go into Bitcoin. And this is why it is uh, uh, this interest we're seeing right now. And this interest is, by the way, confirmed by Grayscale. Gray, gray oh my God, Grayscale, that we will be talking about later with their new report. Um, and so you realize also the fact that when you have a market economy such as we have in the Western world, which is fueled by the central banking and basically with interest rates that control everything, being these huge levers that control the economy, which you, by the way, learned in this video, it is just inevitable that we will see a recession soon because it is just part of the system. When people bor borrow a lot, they create a time in the future where they have to pay back that loan and where they have to pay back that debt. Meaning 
meaning that there is a time in the future created when they need to cut back, they need to save, they need to basically return their juice. So that, that is why you have this cycle. And this cycle is also inflated by interest rates. And the fact that the central banks make, um, make it very, the central bank in your country will make it very easy for people to borrow money and create a lot of wealth today. And this will basically be at the cost of tomorrow because sooner or later you need to pay back. And this spirals, spirals down the whole thing because when you have to pay back, you cannot hire people. Those people cannot pay back their debts and so on and so forth. So the whole system goes down again. Go ahead and watch it. And so something we need to understand is that people are now desperate for a return. People who have money want to find some other ways to make money that is outside of the central bank system, that is outside of what is happening today with the economic cycle, because it is just inevitable that it will come down crashing. And something that is very interesting right now is the fact that institutional investors are getting into crypto and they are getting into Bitcoin specifically. So this is really the next topic I want to discuss with you, which is this digital asset investment report that has come out from Grace Grayscale just a few <laughs> a few days ago. I have issue with this name, Grayscale. Grayscale. Okay. Uh, anyway, if you look at it, you will see the activity right now when it comes to institutional investors, what kind of assets they're looking at and what kind of uh, uh, placements and what kind of bets they're making. Something that is very interesting to look is just the proportions of Bitcoin versus altcoins. So right now, in the first quarter of 2019, basically during the bear market, uh, institutional investors focus 99% of their investments on Bitcoin and only 1% on other assets. This is in contrast to last year, from April 1st to, uh, to March uh, uh, 31st, basically you have a 12-month rolling window. If you take the look at the whole year from today and one year back, you will see that this is actually quite bigger uh, and the portion for altcoins is also bigger, 24%. While if you only look at January 1st, 2019 to today, only the last quarter, you will see that this picture has dramatically changed and now only 1% is in altcoins. So in my view, you see this clear connection between the fact that interest are low, we are in this cycle that is inevitable and uh, big money now wanting somewhere else to go. Big money now seeing the fact that we're recovering from one of the biggest bear markets in crypto and obviously, obviously it is very lucrative. Obviously it is very lucrative for them and that is why we're seeing such percentages when it comes to institutional uh, investments. Something else that is very important to discuss is really what happened in the crypto markets during the past days. Because if you look at the charts, we saw this huge dump in Bitcoin. And uh, many people, ha people have already spoken about it. But if you look at the past uh, days here, uh, you see this. And this was caused by a few players or maybe one player who liquidated basically... 5,000 Bitcoin. Now, this is very important because in our market conditions today, we see a lot of people trading on BitMEX. We see a lot of people being extremely vulnerable to market volatility. We see a lot of people going on BitMEX, BitMEX opening up 20x, 30x positions. Whether they are long or short does not matter. So here is my warning to you guys. If you are a trader and you're using BitMEX as your chance, as your opportunity to make money, realize you're extremely vulnerable because this market is easily manipulated a few K up or a few K down. In the long run, it doesn't matter because as you can see today, we have recovered for the, from this dump. We have recovered from this dump right here without any issue because the market is strong and the sentiment is strong. But of course, if you had a 30, 20 exposition on BitMEX and you were long, you were absolutely slaughtered right here. You were absolutely 100% slaughtered. Now, people are speculating that this was a, a dump uh, that was engineered and really you need to be very, very careful with the fact that the the markets are illiquid, especially the markets that uh, BitMEX is using for their exchange. They're using Bitstamp and they're using Coinbase. So uh, this is what happened uh, by Dovi Wan. She is really good at covering a lot of events. So basically someone put a 5,000 
Bitcoin sell order on Bitstamp and because of poor depth and uh, uh, maybe they had issue with their market makers and their algorithm, this whole situation uh, really, really turned out very ugly. And uh, for us who are here for the long term and not trading and uh, we're not um, uh, really uh, caring about what is happening day to day, it doesn't matter. But for all people who witnessed the price on Bitstamp going past 7k and down into 6k's but then recovering quickly we saw this flash crash it is of course very painful and the whole market also of course re reacted as a whole and we went down to 7k but if you look at Bit Bitstamp in particular we went below 7k so this was a big big mistake I think on the part of Bitmax to only have Bits Bitstamp and uh, another exchange I think it is Coinbase uh, and not have a lot of other changes. You realize how vulnerable their customers is. And could it be the fact that BitMEX is uh, behind this? Who knows? I mean, really, once again, the length to pe that people go to in order to scam you in the space is mind-blowing. Could it be them? Maybe. But we have no proof. We have no facts that support that. But uh, just looking at the incentives, did they have an incentive? Yes. Uh, was it really they? Who knows? So realize, if you do not know this, you do not know that the market depth is not really that great, the liquidity is not really that great, and you trade on BitMEX, and you don't know what kind of markets they're using, what kind of changes they're building their price on, you are also plankton. Unfortunately, you're also plankton. Guys, do not be plankton. I, I, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just telling you that. Do not be plankton. Now, let's move on to another topic that I think everyone should study and everyone should understand. It is about market makers. It, it is about um, understanding how crypto markets work. And it is about understanding that right now, it's not a lot about the fundamentals. It is not a lot about the actual fund uh, fundamentals of the project. And it is more about how does the team handle the markets? Does the team, for example, uh, have a market maker? How good is their market maker? So when you see news like this, let me pull up this uh, article about Binance. When you see news like this, <clears throat> that Binance tokens that did the, their IEO on Binance, that they're performing so well, I mean, yes, a lot has to do with the fact that they were launched on Binance, and Bi Binance is a big name, but also a lot has to do with these projects having great market makers. So first, I want to show you this video from Investopedia, what is a market maker, and uh, then we will be talking more about it. So let's just watch this quick video, and then we will continue and connect it to crypto, because this video is really about the stock market. But the the same ideas apply in crypto as well. So let's take a listen. Let's go, let's go. A market maker is a firm or an individual that stands ready to buy and sell a particular security throughout the trading session to maintain liquidity and a fair and orderly market in that security. Sometimes no one may be selling a stock that you're interested in buying, or no one may be bidding on a stock that you're trying to sell. This is where the market maker comes in by making a market or making bids and offers to accommodate orders that cannot be matched in the market. So this is very important for crypto because many crypto assets are simply illiquid. There is no one buying, there is no one selling. And also you need to realize that it is especially true for IEOs because when someone launches a token, there is no market participants. And therefore, when you are investing in IEOs, you need to be asking the team, of course, about the fundamentals, but also you need to be asking the team about market makers. I know it sounds crazy that you need to ask it from the team, but when the IEO actually goes live and when the token starts trading, you need to understand the importance of market makers. So as, as we just learned, the market maker will basically promise to take orders. So if you want to sell a cryptocurrency that just launched some kind of IEO, their market maker is supposed to be there and take your order. Or if you want to buy, the same should happen. So let's continue watching and learn more. A bid-ask spread is maintained by the market maker and is the difference in price between the cost to buy and sell the security. For example, the market bid to ask for KK stores is $50 to $50.05. The market maker decides to buy 1,000 shares from seller Mike for $50 per share. Now he has 1,000 shares. So th this happens in crypto before they even launch. So when you have these IEOs, before they go onto Binance, before they go to any exchange, they have to uh, make a relationship with the market maker. Basically, they go to a market making firm and they give them 
some kind of uh, of tokens, some kind of incentive, some kind of money to do market making. Because as you see, market making is associated with risks. Because obviously, when people uh, are trading and when you are forced because you are pr you're promising to take those orders, you, you run the risk of the market, for example, crashing and people not buying from you at the prices you bought from the exchange. So this is very important to realize and this is very important to understand and follow. So all crypto projects always have some kind of market maker. With KK stores sitting in his account and he hopes to get a buyer real soon. The market maker offers to sell his shares for $50, four cents each, thus creating or making a new market. Because his offer is now the best offer, he attracts buyer Casey, who is willing to purchase 1,000 shares. The bid-ask spread of $0.04 cents represents the market maker's profit of $40. By buying low and... Anyway, the market maker buys shares and then hopes that someone will buy at a higher price. And the, and the difference there is, is his risk premium because he's taking a risk. Now, with crypto, you don't really have the same mechanic. In crypto, the market maker is really not out to make a profit because many projects in crypto just want the price to survive. They're not even looking to have a market maker to make a profit. They're paying the, mar the market maker in order to provide liquidity and they're not taking any risk because the crypto project will pay them for their uh, services. Now, market making is very important because if you do not have any liquidity, the prices are prone to very high volatility. And especially in crypto with new coins, you can really move the price a lot if a coin has zero market making. Therefore, they are very, very key. And when you look at the top coins, by the way, such as, um, uh, let's see here, for example, such as XRP. Now, why is XRP performing so well? A lot has to do with, of course, people uh, getting excited. Let me go back to the front page. A lot has to do with people getting excited, but also they are world class at market making. This is something that you really have to give XRP. Their market makers are maybe the best in the crypto market, and they have been doing this for a long time. So when you look at projects, realize today, unfortunately, it's not that much about fundamentals. It is a lot about market market maker trying to uh, trying to use the market to your advantage and trying to uh, support the market trying to support the prices something else we have to understand is the following that usually what you have is the following uh, situation your mar market maker will have a tight spread so in normal market conditions your market maker will place their bid and asks prices very close to the actual market price. So this is normal market condition so that the price gets a, a lot of stability. And this is important for all IEOs out there, all new coins, all new projects. I mean, this Binance tokens right here, uh, they always have a, a market maker that in normal market conditions, when the market is stable, will usually put their prices very close to the market, uh, to the actual market price. So the, uh, the spread will be very, very tight. So let's write it tight right here here, tight spread. Now, if there are many good news coming out, if you have a project that is really, really getting a lot of good coverage, you have a lot of announcements, you have a lot of uh, exciting things going on with the project, what market maker will do, this is, by the way, something that the project will tell the market maker. The project will then go to the market maker and tell them, hey, you need to remove the prices that you are um, that you are buying, uh, that you are selling at, so that there's nobody selling, so that the market can actually go up a lot. So when there are good news, we have a lot of good news, um, the market maker will usually remove their sell, uh, their sell orders. So in that sense, it will allow the price to skyrocket more and it will really use the illiquidity of the market to their advantage because now people get excited and the market maker removes their sell orders, meaning that the price can go up a lot. So realize there's so much going on behind the scenes. And if you are in crypto and you do not know about market makers, you might be buying into a project that has great uh, fundamentals. Uh, you, that has great uh, uh, news, great uh, technology, but has just bad m uh, market making. And it will play against you. It will play against you if the team doesn't know anything about how this works and they do not know uh, how to adjust their market maker in the real time, when, when you have uh, good news or when you have bad news. Because when bad news comes, obviously you need to create a, a lot of buy orders to support that price. Now, there's always 
a thin line between market makers and uh, market making and wash trading. I mean, in crypto, uh, market makers and wash trading is something that is sometimes blurred a lot. Uh, these two concepts. In normal stock markets, you have clear rules what the market maker is allowed and not allowed to do. And in crypto, you do not have that strict rules. In crypto, some market makers are shady market makers that will, for example, offer you to do wash trading for you. And in order to increase your volume, and in order to really make your coin look better or your exchange look better. But in normal markets, in the stock market, market makers is uh, something you use every day. Everyone has a market maker and there are clear rules what you're allowed and not allowed to do. Very important to understand. Now, guys, finally, I really want to get back to this uh, topic of uh, central banks and really how you need to study the economy and how you need to understand what is happening in the market right now. I always, I already mentioned this um, video right here by Ray Dalio. We already talked about the fact that Bank of America uh, chief investment officer is saying that the the attraction of Bitcoin and attraction of cryptocurrencies is due to the fact that. Um, it's due to the fact that uh, the uh, interest rates are low and people are not getting a return on their investment. By the way, I, I see Mad Cow in the chat. Do you still love... Uh, I, I never supported XRP, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I discussed the fact that uh, they, people are excited about XRP, but uh, to me, XRP is not a long-term play. But uh, let me know if you are excited. So... Uh, so to finish off, to finish off this video, I want to get back to the fact that we are living in this economy that is highly fueled by cycles and that is highly fueled by uh, central banks adjusting interest rates. So this is something you need to understand. If you do not have cash flow, you are at the mercy of central banks 100%. If you do not have cash flow or if you do not have crypto. Now, what do I mean? I mean the following, that when the economy goes down, you have something called quantitative easing. The central banks are printing money in order to save the banks, in order to stimulate the economy, and in order to make the cycle go round. Now, if you do not have any business that produces cash flow uh, on a monthly basis, and you only have cash, your wealth will be stolen from you by the central banks. So therefore, it is important to have some kind of cash flow so that you get new money each and every month. Maybe you have real estate. Maybe you have a lot of renters renting your real estate. Maybe you have some other business that gets you currency uh, from a foreign country so that you're not really exposed to your own country's currency 100%. So cash flow is very important. If you want to survive the next crash and you want to survive the next um, uh, stories, we hear about quantitative easing. Now, another... Uh, alternative is crypto. Now, crypto is, of course, way more risky, but crypto is also disconnected from the central bank system, and therefore, you are not really as much plankton if you are in crypto, if you are, uh, compared to if you're only in cash. If you're only in cash, guys, you are 100% plankton right here. And you will be eaten by everyone in the economy who, who knows how things work. People that know that, hey, you need to have cash flow. You basically will be the consumer class. Unfortunately, this is how the system is rigged right now. It is rigged against the average person. The average person is just a consumer to provide cash flow for everyone else. And if you are just a consumer, you do not have a lot of assets. You do not have a lot of savings. You will not get... Uh, alone approved, you will not be able to uh, benefit from low interest rates because low interest rates are great for someone who has very good credit rating. They can go start a business. They can go buy a property with very cheap money. Now, if you do not have good uh, credit rating, you will not get it. So this is why, unfortunately, most people will not uh, will not use the bear market in the traditional com economy to their advantage. A lot has to do because this whole game is stacked against us. Unfortunately, this is the case. But at least you need to understand what is happening. That you, if you have just a normal job, you will not be able to utilize it because, unfortunately, you do not have have cash flow outside. Of of your normal job. With crypto, you are more protected. You're more protected because at least that is not connected to uh, QE. At least it is not connected to your central bank controlling over your life. Now, 
Of course, in crypto, you can have 80% down, downwards spirals. Of course, in, in crypto, you can have so many other terrible things happen to you as well. But it's all about playing the long game. It's all about looking in the future, playing the long game. Do not use high leverage on BitMEX and try to get rich quick because you will be wrecked by, uh, by market manipulation, which we see, by the way, every day. And uh, could it be that people are liquidating BitMEX traders with this move right here that we saw during the past days? Let me... Uh, as I showed you, could be, could be, maybe. Th this move right here, many BitMEX users were liquidated right here because they had so much long positions. And they do the same on the way upwards because when we see a downwards move like this, many people go short. They go 100x short on, <laughs> on BitMEX. And then the market returns and they get double wrecked. So be careful, play the long game. Guys, I will not have time for comments today, but thank you everyone who has watched. I see one comment though, 1,000 1, people, only 170 likes. Guys, smash up the likes right now if you haven't yet, do it right now. Most importantly, smash that bell, that bell, uh, let me see, bell icon, or uh, yeah, heart, I give you heart, but give me the bell. I give you heart, you give me bell, okay? So click the bell icon right now, and I see you all very, very soon. I'll see you all tomorrow, 8 a.m. Central European Summertime. Like an atomic clock as always we're back we're back from the us we're back to hustle amazing to be back i like my new chair and i'll see you all very very soon have a great day and goodbye guys goodbye goodbye <laughs>